Hola. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we're doing today, super, super fun. I love teaching these. It is called a Turkish Fold book. Um, I took bookmaking when I was in college. It was one of my favorite classes I took, and we learned this, and um, this is what it looks like. I did actually make this video. Uh, I made one last year, but my setup has changed, so I wanted to re-record it. But this is a Turkish fold book. Normally the pages are super, super long. Like we usually make a very, very long one, but I only decided to do four pages today uh, just to show you basics. You will be needing to make one that's at least 10 pages long. You can make one longer if you like, uh, but 10 pages really makes a really nice Turkish fold book. So I will just show you really quick how it opens and closes. It's really fun because it closes back up into a tiny little square and then you let it go and it's a little spring. It is, I don't want to say it's complicated, but you do need to pay attention. Because if you miss a step, it'll throw you off completely and then it might not open and close the same way. Okay? Uh, but it's really fun. Like I said, I love teaching these. I teach these every single year that I've been a teacher and it's, it's always a ball. It's super fun. <laughs> so you can use um, multiple color paper, like I use purple and green. You can use white paper, you can use notebook paper, it doesn't matter. Um, they do have to be perfect squares. Like each page has to be a square. You can't do it with a rectangle or a triangle or anything like that, it does need to be a square. Later on I show you how to cut out a square or like cut a square if you don't have a ruler with you, but if you do have a ruler or something to measure with, I would suggest doing that because they all need to be relatively the same size. Okay? But this is super fun. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you make a whole bunch and have a super fun time. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, like I said, you do need square pieces of paper. You cannot do this with a rectangle or triangle or hexagon or whatever. It needs to be um, as close to a perfect square as you can get it. These pieces of paper are about three inches by three inches. If you do not have a ruler, I suggest you use a ruler and to make sure all sides are equal. But if you don't have a ruler, I'm gonna show you a really easy way, really quick, how to get a square from a rectangle piece of paper. All you gotta do, like no matter like what kind of rectangle it is, you go to one of the corners. I always go to the top right, no reason. Go to the corner, grab it. You're gonna fold it down <laughs> fold it down to where this edge meets the bottom edge it'll look like this it'll look like a little triangle and then the rest you don't want to crease it but then what you do you just get some scissors and you cut a line going straight up and then when you cut all that off this will be your square okay so a rectangle grab a corner pull it down so it meets that bottom edge like that and then you just cut it right off. So um, what you're going to do, you're going to have 10 pieces of paper. You're going to have 10 little squares. I only have four just because I'm showing you the basics of how to do this, but you need to have at least 10. When we do this in school, uh, students really go crazy with it. Sometimes they try to make them the Turkish fold book. Sometimes you try to make them as tall as themselves, as tall as themselves. Sometimes I'm a pretty tall person. If you don't know, uh, sometimes they make them as tall as me. So they get really into it. So it just depends, but you need to at least have 10 pieces of paper. So what you do, you make one at a time. So I'm going to grab one piece. I'm going to push these to the side. So the way you make a Turkish fold book, you do three creases, like three different folds. And then you do something called the inverse fold, which we'll get to. So first thing we do, you fold it in half. So like vertically, so it's like a hot dog. Please make sure to line up your corners and your edges as close as you can. Obviously it depends on how you cut your paper. Now, when you crease your paper, you need to do it as hard as you can. Pinch those fingers, just don't tear your paper and really press down. You can also lay it down on a paper, use the side of your thumb and really press hard. You can also use a pen or a pencil and just rub that fold down because hopefully you might find out the hard way, but when you don't have a really nice crisp fold, it'll uh, mess you up later on. So you need a really, really nice sharp fold. So we have 
that half fold. Now you're gonna fold it in half the other direction. So we have this one going up and down vertical. Now you're gonna fold it horizontally. So the other, the other way. Again, make sure your corners match as close as you can get them. Crease that line. I'm gonna grab my pen and just really push down hard on it. And make sure it's nice and sharp. So now we have like a plus sign. We're gonna do one more crease. What we're gonna do is a diagonal crease. So you're gonna take one corner and you're gonna match it with the other corner. It's gonna fold it like a triangle. Sometimes the paper doesn't want to fold this way. So you just gotta tell it, <laughs> you gotta tell it what to do. You're the boss. All right, so we got our diagonal fold. Like I said, it'll look like a triangle. And then as always, push down really hard when you make that crease. This one's probably the most important to make the crease. Now, it should be looking like this. So we should have a plus and then a diagonal going straight through it and that's it. That's all the creases we're gonna make. What we're gonna do next is a little tricky, so please pay attention. We're gonna do what's called an inverse fold. We're gonna turn this big square into a little square in one step. I want you to hold, find your diagonal line and hold it, here's mine, right here. I want you to hold it like this, put your thumbs on the diagonal line. They should be directly on it, just like how you see mine. What you're gonna do, you're gonna start pushing down on the diagonal line. You want the corners to meet just like that. I'll show you again, maybe it'll be better this way. So, thumbs on the diagonal line, you're pushing down because you want these two corners to touch. And then it's gonna look like this, okay? This one sometimes takes a little while to get. Thumbs on the diagonal, push down. You want the corners to touch and meet, hold them. Try to match the corners up perfectly. So then you just hold it like this. Just a few more steps. What we need to do, can you see how the top of mine is really flat right here? It needs to be pointy. We need this to be pointy. So really, really gently, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze the top and now I have a little point on the very top. Hopefully everyone saw that. Okay, one more thing we gotta do and then we're done. We're gonna turn this into a square. So take your pincher fingers, your index and your thumb. You're gonna place one on each side and then you're just gonna squish them together all the way, squish, 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 and then boom. So this is one page of a Turkish fold book and it's supposed to open and close just like this. Okay, we're gonna do one more together. Then I'm gonna finish up and then I'm gonna show you how to glue them together because that's just as important. Okay, so just like before, we got our square. You're gonna fold it in half. Again, try to make sure those corners line up as best as you can get it and really push, push down on that fold. So we have our vertical line. Now you're gonna fold it in half the other direction. So horizontally, side to side. My paper is a little crooked, so <laughs> it's not matching up too perfectly. But then we got our plus sign and our last crease fold is the triangle, the diagonal. So one corner to the other corner. And remember, the paper doesn't really wanna do it sometimes, so you just have to force it. All right, now we have our plus sign and then our diagonal. So now we're gonna do the inverse fold. So find your diagonal line, put your thumbs on it. You're going to press both sides down to, whoa, mine got wiggly. Press them down to the corners, meet like this. Looks like that. Again, for some reason, this part is really flat I want it to be pointy, so I'm gonna give it just a tiny little pinch at the top so it's nice and pointy, looking like that. And then our last step, index finger and your thumb, one side, one side, push all the way down, and then you squish, squish, squish all of it, and you have your Turkish fold page, just like the other page. They should all look like this. They should all open and close just like this. All right, I'm gonna finish doing my other two. Like I said, you need to do 10 at least, and then once I'm done with these two, I will show you how you glue them together. 
All right, so if you are still making your 10 pages, um, go ahead, pause the video really quick, finish making them, and then you can unpause it or play it <laughs> um, because I'm gonna show you how to glue them together and you need to have all 10 of your pieces done, like made, before you start gluing them. All right, so this is probably, I don't wanna say it's tricky, but you definitely need to pay very close attention to how you glue your pages together or it won't open up correctly. My hands are just like blah, 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 blah. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna grab two pieces. Now, the important thing about a Turkish fold book is that your pages need to be going in opposite directions. So all I mean by that is pay attention to the points on your Turkish fold. So if everyone can notice, this side has four points, one, two, three, four. And then when you flip it over, there's only one right in the middle. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one. What you're gonna do when you start making your book I always say, I always start with the first page opening up or opening like to the ceiling, right now it is. So that means all four of the points are facing the ceiling and the one point at the bottom is facing the floor. The next page that you grab needs to be facing the opposite direction. That does not mean that all four points are facing up because that's going the same direction as this one. This is, they're going the same way. So what you're gonna do you flip it over so that that one point at the very top right there, that is facing the ceiling and the four points are facing the floor. Does everyone see? So when I hold it like this, can everyone see how they're facing opposite directions? On my purple one, the four points are facing up and on my green one, the four points are facing down. Okay, so when you glue them all together, it's gonna go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, kind of like that. So once you get them facing the right direction, what we're gonna do, we glue, I call these the blank squares, because you have a square that doesn't have anything in it, and then you have a square that has a line going through it. We leave those squares alone. <laughs> You're gonna put glue on the blank square. You're gonna line them up, make sure they're going opposite directions. So up, down, and then you just match up the squares as close as you can get it. I'm gonna put glue on it really quick. So I can show you. Sometimes this takes a little while for students to get, which is totally normal. I didn't learn this till I was in college. I think I was 21 when I learned this. So the fact that y'all can even do this is amazing because it's very complicated. All right, so my four points are facing up and then I need to flip this one. So those four points are facing down just like this. I line up the blank squares, and then you just squish them together. You can, I usually go like this. <laughs> squish, squish. So now when you open it, it's kind of like a little like, meh, 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 meh. Look, everyone can see hopefully, purple four points are facing the ceiling, and the green, the four points are facing the floor. So, when I grab my next page, how am I gonna turn it? If this one's facing up and this one's facing down, which should these face sideways? Should these face down too? That's what it looks like when you face them down. No, no. <laughs> this one will also face up. So all four of these little points are all gonna face the ceiling. And then you just match the squares up and glue it and it'll look like this. So again, I'm gonna do that really quick. Make sure you're gluing it well. You wanna get all your corners and your edges. So, oh, I almost glued it on wrong. Did y'all see that? <laughs> I need them to face up and the green faces down. I match up the squares, line them up. Make sure your corners and your edges are matching so they're not crooked. And I just squish it down all together and do a little squish squish. All right, so that's it so far. We got our three pages. I'm gonna add one more page because I only made four, but again, you did 10 at least, so you will keep going. All right, our very last page, my green page, up, down, up, down. So if these four points are facing up, then these four points are gonna face down. Turn it sideways, just like that. Okay, hopefully y'all are kinda Catching on to the little pattern going on here. All right, I'm gonna line it up. 
and I squish them all down and there we go it's super fun when you make it really really long because when you fold it all down together like a square and you let go it's kind of like a really big spring when you make a whole bunch of them it's really fun i really enjoy making these i love teaching them every single year the students like doing it so hopefully you like it too <laughs>